You know she didn't mean to do that. Move your hand. Shanna, you can scoot over too if you want. Mm -hmm. Dominique, you scoot over towards Shanna. Sit not all the way back. That's why I put the pillows behind you guys so you can feel comfortable with your back. Go ahead, move back some, Shanna. Depends on how bad I can move. Really? Are you sure? It's, it don't look like it. it That's look... better. You have pain in your back. Yeah, or your lower back. Mm -hmm. and so, so that way it, it protrudes from the couch. Yeah. So your lower back doesn't hurt and you don't feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about putting your feet on the ground. You're going to keep growing. Eventually you'll be able to do so. All right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and as you grow older, these couches are going to get bad. We're going to get new ones. And when we get new ones, we are going to get them where they are not so comfortable. <laughs> okay? But no, it's not going to be too hard either. It's just not going to be comfortable to the point where you're going to become a couch potato. <laughs> okay, I don't want butts on the couches for hours at a time. Like All right, <laughs> like these are like we have right now. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Do not put your feet in your mouth, Dominique. Thank you. All right. Um, How y'all doing this uh, morning? Good. I hope so. I hope y'all uh, willing to pay attention and uh, and uh, uh, keep absorbing. Mm -hmm on the treatment of others, because we're going to continue on that series with the treatment of others, okay? Okay. It's, it's very, how important it is to treat people, Shanna? How important it is to treat people? Good. It's very, it's, it's good? It's very important? Yeah. All right. It's very important to treat people well, okay? You don't want to treat them bad. Regardless of how they treat you, you do not want to treat them bad. You don't want to treat them. You don't want to put them down. Mm -hmm. You want. You don't want to do anything like that. Amen. Amen. You always want to treat them good. Yeah. Regardless if it's your brother, regardless if it's your sister, your mother, your father, your own children when you get older, your friends, strangers, it doesn't matter. And most people that's going to hurt you a lot of times. It's either going to be people that's close to you or a total stranger. Amen? Amen. It's usually not going to be friends, uh, close friends, because they actually treat you well unless somehow you guys are living with each other all the time. Mm -hmm. Other than that, that's, not, that's usually not the case. Because when you see your friends, you treat them very well because you're hanging out with them. You're not really living with them. But if you're living with your friend... Your friend becomes your brother or sister, mm -hmm. and next thing you know it, y'all you, start treating them like siblings, and that's what, that's what usually happens. They're still close to you. You still love them, but usually that happens, and that way they get to know you, and they, and they end up hurting you, whether it's on purpose or by mistake. Usually that's not the case. Usually you from a total different stranger that you'll get hurt from or people that you are living with that's very close to you, like your siblings. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have talked about bullying by using scriptures from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1 through 7 as our biblical example. Mm -hmm. We all know that uh, Penina was uh, bullying Hannah to the point where Hannah was uh, really depressed and distraught. Mm -hmm. and nowadays, a person that's like that, they could go ahead and, and uh, commit suicide. And like I had told y'all before, the main goal of bullying is not to cause physical or social pain is to cause mental and psychological pain. Mm -hmm. It attacks deep. And I mean deep to the core. To the point where your spirit is hurting or your mind is hurting. Alright? And if you do not uh, if you do not understand that and you are bullying someone, mm -hmm. especially if it's on purpose or by mistake, it doesn't matter. If you're bullying someone and you bully them to the point where they commit themselves uh, commit suicide. Mm -hmm. You may be held accountable for murder, whether it's earthly law, and you may be held accountable God law. Amen? Amen. So that's something that you don't want to do. That's something that you have to understand. Last week, we had flipped the focus on ourselves. Uh, basically, the sermon was called, How Do You Want to Be Treated? Mm -hmm. So in order to treat others, you needed to treat, uh, you need to know how you wanted to be treated. Because the scripture in Matthew 7, 12 says treat others, pretty much treat others the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. If uh, uh, nobody wants to, wants to be treated badly and unfairly, mm -hmm. 
So according to that scripture, if you had treated someone bad and unfairly, you pretty much are telling them you wanted to be treated and fairly and fairly mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But that's not what the scripture wanted us to understand. Want you to treat people how you want to be treated, not how they treat you. We realize in order to receive the treatment that we desire from others, we need to be on the offensive and treat others with that desired treatment mm -hmm. first, yeah. regardless of how they treat you. We cannot wait for the treatment. So you don't want them treating you that way, and then you give it back to them. That's not how that works. Mm -hmm. We always want to be in the giving mode. Giving mode, yes. There's times where you're going to be in the receiving mode because you need to allow other people to give things to you. Mm -hmm. But you always, most likely, want to be in the giving mode. Mm -hmm. Whether you are giving kindness to someone, whether you are giving positive mm -hmm. advice, or positive reactions, <laughs> which is basically what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. But you always want to get be in the giving mode. We talked about forgiveness, respect, loyalty, and love as examples. These acts, we want others to give to us, plus other acts as well. But we cannot expect to receive any of them if we do not give them to others. Today we are going to uh, today we are going to focus on our reactions, but. Uh, but in a projectile manner. <laughs> oh, you got that raised up pretty high there. In a projectile manner. Uh, today we are going to focus on our reactions, but in a, in a projectile manner. We are going to look at projectiles physically and spiritually. What comes to mind when you hear the word projectile? What comes to mind when you hear the word projectile? Do you know what a projectile is, by any, any chance? No. Okay, if you don't, that's fine, because we're going to go ahead and go over that as well. A projectile, here's an example of projectiles. A bullet, a missile, a missile, shrapnel, anything pretty much that's moving in the air. Yeah. So basically, or just moving in general, it don't even have to be in the air. A car can be a projectile. <coughs> An airplane can be a projectile. Okay? Okay. Even insects that fly can be projectiles. Mm. Just saying. So basically anything that moves can be a projectile. My arm can be a projectile, especially if it's flaring around uncontrollably. The definition of projectile basically says something shot, thrown, or propelled, mm -hmm. excuse me, as a weapon. Which means projectiles are at our fingertips every day, readily available to inflict pain. Mm -hmm. Say it correctly, please. To inflict pain, to include paper clips from, from slingshots, rockets, I mean, uh, rocks, soda bottles, wow. garbage cans, etc. I can pick up this base and toss it at you, that's a projectile. I can pick up this TV and throw it at you, that's a projectile. Take this stand, take this notebook, throw it at you, that's a projectile. I can take a basketball and purposely throw it at you mm -hmm. as a projectile instead of a pass. Okay? Mm -hmm. It is, uh, it is pro propelled as a weapon. Do you understand? Yeah. So, if I, so here's an example. If I'm driving a car and I purposely steer it towards you, that is a projectile? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I'm using that car as a weapon to hit you. Mm -hmm. Okay? You are prone to attacks regardless if you deserve it or not. I will say that one more time. You are prone to attacks whether you deserve it or not. Mm -hmm. When you are in a disagreement, it usually start off, starts off as verbal and may become physical. Someone could grab, push, shove, slap, punch, or kick the other party. Mm -hmm. In extreme measures, an object could be hurled, forcibly pushed, shot, mm -hmm. self-propelled with a push of a button, or steered with the intent of inflicting bodily harm. That example I gave earlier was steer. Because I was controlling the car. I was steering the car mm -hmm. towards an individual or to something to, uh, to uh, inflict bodily pain. Or uh, harm to a business like hitting their building. Mm -hmm. To hurt those individuals financially. That right there are projectiles. When asked, why did you use this weapon to hurt this person, the, the excuse usually doesn't match the offense. Mm -hmm. 
since a lot of people have been in or seen an altercation that have became physical, there should be some relation here. I'm one of those people. I grew up fighting. I won some, lose some, it doesn't, doesn't matter. I grew up fighting. And things were probably picked up, tossed, thrown, or whatever. Uh, but I grew up fighting. So I understand that relation there. Physical projectiles, when used as a weapon, are evil, regardless if they are reactions or used for protection. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, guns can be used for protection. It also can be used for reactive. Uh, you, uh, people doing it as a revenge or anything like that. That is still, it don't matter, still evil. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Why do I say something like that is still evil, even though if it's protecting other lives? The flesh wants to be satisfied, and it knows how to do it without thinking. This is called muscle memory. It doesn't have time to practice long suffering by observing, thinking, and planning carefully. It doesn't want to talk it out. It doesn't want to rationalize it out. It doesn't want to do anything like that, okay? It wants to have the upper hand at all times, and reacting off impulse is always on the front burner. It's always on the forefront of the flesh's way of thinking. So if I do something wrong to mommy, immediately she gets defensive. Mm. Or if I say anything to mommy, immediately she can get defensive. If I say anything to you guys, immediately you get defensive. Immediately your feelings are hurt. Mm -hmm. If I can say something to a stranger, if that person I reacts that way, immediately they get defensive and they immediately they get hurt and immediately they start firing back with words. Mm -hmm. That's how it usually starts. Okay? Fighting evil with evil is the only way it sees how to overcome adversity. Mm -hmm. And it does it the easiest way possible. This is the one, this is one of the reasons why the world has been in continued chaos right now. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why they don't want to negotiate. They don't want to talk it out. They always want to have the upper hand. They don't want to be humble. Mm -hmm. They don't. That's the world. Doesn't want to do it. Politics. Doesn't want to do it. Doesn't want to be humble. It doesn't want to grovel down to anybody. Speaking of fighting evil with evil, I want you to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 38 through 39. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 38 through 39. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 38 through 39. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. The verse 38 says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Verse 39, but I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, Turn to him the other also. Mm -hmm. So when somebody does something to you, physically, if you want to take that verse literally, mm -hmm. when somebody hits you on the right cheek, you offer the other cheek as well. You don't yeah. fight back. You say, you want to hit me? Come on, continue to hit me. Hit the other side as well. Don't be, don't be unfair to that side of my face. Hit that face as well. Hit that side too so it can be treated equally. Uh, at the same time, the main point is uh, Jesus is telling us not to resist evil. He is telling us to let evil have its way. Mm -hmm. Keep on offering. You keep on doing that, you're going to suppress evil. Yeah, you may take some pain, some physical pain, but if you are spiritually strong, you know why you are doing it, and you know why you're receiving it. Mm -hmm. Evil will eventually stop or fade away. A lot of us have difficulty allowing evil to have its way with us because we do not like to be in pain, mm -hmm. emotionally or physically. We don't like to be in pain at all. Even socially, some people will still go out and purposely find friends. They don't like being by themselves. We don't like to be in pain. We do not like to be pushed around or set aside. Set aside meaning ignored. Mm -hmm. We do not like to be treated like an outcast. We do not like to be verbally downplayed. Or downplayed, period. We will defend ourselves. We will defend ourselves by becoming invisible. 
We will defend ourselves by making a prideful stand. We will defend ourselves by using our words, which we will talk about later. Because right now, we are talking about the physical part. We will defend ourselves by using projectiles. And let's stick with the projectile defense. Using projectiles as a defense usually take a, a plan of action to construct, to create, to conjure. Usually takes a plan. We are fooled by this, especially if you are... Uh, Especially if you are in charge of a country. Let's say it like that. You don't usually just retaliate like that. You plan it out first. It may seem like you retaliate, especially if you did it within six hours, but you still have a plan. You have six hours to plan to do something. It's not like, oh, you did this to us right then and there, boom. No, that doesn't work that way. We are fooled by this because we are to believe that we have to depend on earthly things to protect us. Evil does not want us to use God for any reason at all. And I mean any reason. Evil does not want us to do that. Evil wants us to fight each other and does not care how it happens. Whether we are firing our projectiles offensively or defensively, evil is getting satisfied because we choose violence over love. We choose to fight instead of turning the uh, the cheek. We choose to resist evil instead of, instead of giving into it. Basically, we don't choose to negotiate. We don't choose to find a, a neutral path or a better path or a neutral ground, better ground, or anything like that. No. We choose to do it physically, to suppress the other person, to get the upper hand on them, and then we want to negotiate. That's how we are in general. That's not how we need to be. Okay? We don't need to be that way. If you have, if you read Galatians 5, uh, verses 16 through 21, this is the works of the flesh. You will see some examples of it. Uh, violent examples like hatred, wrath, strife, and murders are there. Paul ends the list of examples in verse 21 by saying, and such like. That phrase includes everything I just talked about. Violence over love, fight instead of turning the other cheek, and resisting evil instead of giving into it. All of that is parts of the works of the flesh, the operation of the flesh. That's how the flesh is. That's how the flesh will always be. Always. The flesh wants to be in control that way. Does not want to step back and let the spirit do it because the spirit... Uh, according to the flesh, takes too long. It's not quick enough. The spirit wants the flesh to feel pain. Flesh don't want to feel pain. But the spirit is the way to go. Uh, the flesh is, the flesh is being, the, that is the flesh being satisfied in an evil way. That is the physical side of projectiles used in an evil way. I am not talking about hunting food like deer and duck, sporting events, like archery, basketball, or hockey, because you shoot a hockey puck, you shoot a basketball, you shoot or fire a bow and arrow. Or on the, or on the job training like police officers and armed forces, because they are trained to, uh, to hold weapons and they're trained to use it. And it's supposed to be trained to use it for the last defense, last result. Mm -hmm. they even supposed to go... They, as a police officer, are supposed to go for a stun gun before they go for their firearm if they have to resort to those measures. I'm just putting that out there. But they are trained to fire off projectiles. I am talking about the decision-making of average people towards each other, and I'm talking about how we treat us. Not if it's our job to fire projectiles. I'm talking about how we treat each other. Where it's not our job to fire projectiles. It's, we're supposed to treat each other with love, respect, dignity, honor, all the time. But we don't do that. We have evil. We want to put people down. We always want to have that upper hand on someone. We don't want to ever present ourselves as being weak. Mm -hmm. With that said, let us look at uh, the projectiles in a spiritual way. I want you to go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21. It's in the Old Testament, babe. The 
book of Proverbs. Hi. It's a red tab. Uh, chapter 18, verse 21. Chapter 18, verse 21. Yes. Verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Spiritual projectiles are using what God has given us. Prayer, love, and the ability to speak. Let's focus on the ability to speak. Or I should say speaking. Mm -hmm. Your mouth has the ability to speak life and death. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, once you say something, you cannot take it back. Mm -hmm. Literally. Mm -hmm. All the things that I just said, I can't take it back. Even if I made a mistake and said something wrong... I need to say I made a mistake. I mean, a lot of people will say I take that back. But that actually means that they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Please forget what I said and move forward. But at the same time, what I have said, what comes out of my mouth, it has been said. Mm -hmm. You cannot hold what you say literally. Me, which means you cannot grab it. I can't grab what I'm saying. You see I'm still talking. And I can't grab what I'm saying. I can't, I can't put my hand on it while I'm talking. Which means you cannot grab it and prevent it from moving forward. As you can see, I'm trying to grab it and trying to prevent my sound from moving forward. I can't grab it. I can't touch it. Mm -hmm. Nobody can. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. The things you say will plant seeds into the listener. And the seed may be powerful enough to take root. Okay? Mm -hmm. You like that analogy, Shanna? Off of what I was trying to do? Trying to grab what I'm saying? This is because words are powerful and should never be taken lightly. For example, you are going to be a deadbeat dad just like your father. You will amount to nothing. You are stupid. You are dumb. You will never be smart. Saying these and other negative statements to others can take root and manifest in the heart of the receiver. Okay? So you understand, you should not say those things because that person could take it to heart and next thing you know it, they become dumb. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or they start realizing that they are stupid when they're really not and they never were. Mm -hmm. But then next thing you know it, you said it so much to them, they start to believe it. It's in their head, it's in their mind, mm -hmm. it's in their heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay. Say, uh, this could be like I said, and I say this again, saying these and other negative statements to others can take root and manifest in the heart of the receiver. Mm -hmm. This could be non-believer or non-believer, mm -hmm. non-believer or Christian, Christian or non-believer, Christian or Christian. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who it is or who you are. Negative statements can take root on anyone. Amen? Amen. It don't matter. You are not prone to it. You're not immune from it. What I mean, uh, you are prone to it. You are not immune from it. You could have negative thoughts. Uh, you could receive the things that people say to you negatively, and it could take root in your heart. Mm -hmm. It could. It sure enough could. I don't care how strong your spirit is or how weak your spirit is. Yes, the percentage the percentage of it happening if you're weak and strong is lower than if your uh, if your spirit is strong. Sorry, mm -hmm. than is if your spirit is weak. But it's still there. You are still subject to it. Mm -hmm. Death and life are in the power of a tongue. If you can use objects to propel reasoning, then using your voice can be done in the same manner. Mm -hmm. Your voice can penetrate walls, stop movements, and curb emotions. It can be used in a negative and positive manner. Death and life. <coughs> Examples of negative speaking are words of hate, Bullying, name calling, confusion, and misdirection. All of these can permanently scar people, downplay their thoughts and emotions, planting the seed of darkness, death. Examples of positive speaking are words of love, protection, encouragement, praise, and sense of direction. All of these can heal people and uplift their thoughts and emotions, planting the seed of light. 
life. If you are claiming to walk in the spirit and attempting to bear fruits of the spirit, then your actions should reflect of the spirit. The actions of the spirit or the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. Mm -hmm. Then everything you do is out of love. Just like God has commanded us in John 15. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I want you to look at the second half of the verse. Because people will fight evil with evil and say they are doing it out of love. You cannot counter, you cannot counter the pride movement with the straight pride movement. You just cannot do that. Pride alone is a sin. It doesn't matter how you use it. Pride is pride. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So fighting pride with pride is sin or sin, producing the fruit of death. Mm -hmm. Which is the opposite of what Jesus had told us to do. You don't fight evil with evil. You present verses like Genesis uh, chapter 2, verses 24 through 25, Leviticus chapter 18, uh, verse 22, or Mark chapter 10, verses 6 through 8, where Jesus was basically uh, talking about marriage between a man and woman. Uh, with love to the individuals that are willing to listen. Willing. You have some people that's not willing to listen, fine. You gave them the opportunity to listen, move on. You cannot react out of revenge. You must be merciful and forgiving like Jesus did in Luke uh, 6, 36 through 37. Doing this will produce life instead of death. You cannot argue with your leaders because you do not like what they are saying. Instead, offer words of encouragement or just be quiet. Being in that seat is tough enough. Plus, you will want others to obey you if you were in that position. Now, granted, I will go ahead and, and uh, put it out there. Being a boss, you cannot satisfy everybody. You just can't. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, not everybody is going to be unsatisfied. Somebody is going to respect what you're doing, and others won't. Mm -hmm. The goal is to have most people to respect what you are doing. But are you doing it for them, or are you doing it for God? If you are in a position and you know God put you there, then first, what you need to do is do for God. All right? Yeah. Excuse me. If you're, and, and, and second, you do for others. Mm -hmm. That's how that works. You're not there for yourself. Mm -hmm. Romans 13, 1 through 7 will, will also give you understanding on how to handle your bosses. Proverbs 18, 21, the second half. And they that love it shall eat uh, the fruit thereof. If you love to speak life, then you will reap life. If you love to speak death, then you will reap life death. Not only will you cause them, you will reap them as well. This is not speaking to people that does this by mistake. That is why that word love is there. You can substitute it with understand because you know what you are doing when you understand it. That is why we rebuke the enemy with God's word and not resist the enemy with our actions. Mm -hmm. That is why we pray for God to heal our brothers and sisters, not hurt them to satisfy the vengeful spirit the flesh wants to use. That is why we share what we know about God's word and remind our fellow brothers and sisters that stumble willingly or unwillingly. Mm -hmm. We do all of this with our words. Planting the seed of life. Not death. We will make will we make mistakes? Of course we will. The difference is how we make them, willingly or unwillingly. Mm -hmm. Making mistakes unwillingly is the way to go. If you made a mistake by saying something wrong to someone, then apologize, save the relationship. Mm -hmm. If you made a mistake by sending out a misinformed email, then apologize. And save the relationship. Mm -hmm. If you made a mistake by taking something someone has said the wrong way, mm -hmm. then apologize and save the relationship. Mm -hmm. Your words can make or break a relationship. We are seeing it now. Mm -hmm. I believe we have a new president because of it. Mm -hmm. 
death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Allowing extremist groups at rallies that you are responsible for shall eat the fruit thereof. Mm -hmm. Treating people like they are beneath you shall eat the fruit thereof. Not having an open mind and just discarding ideas because the ideas weren't thought of by you, egotistic, shall eat the fruit thereof. Standing firm on pride instead of taking on responsibility shall eat the fruit thereof. Burning bridges and creating weaker ones to improve your image shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen? Amen. Those are examples, and there's more out there. There's more out there. There's more out there. You can, you'll, you'll reap the fruit mm -hmm. that you produce, or you'll reap the fruit that you allow others to produce, especially if you had the, uh, the, the means of curbing that or controlling that or stopping that, but you allowed it to happen. You will eat the fruit thereof. Period. Point blank. I spoke about I spoke about mistakes earlier. So before I end, I would like to explain what a mistake is. Mm -hmm. Doing something and here's some examples of it. Doing something that you know is wrong and get caught in the act is not a mistake. Mm -hmm. Doing something that you know you are not supposed to do and you get caught in the act is not a mistake. It is a deliberate act. It is a choice that you made even though you knew uh, not to do the wrong act. Mm -hmm. Too many people will call that a mistake. Too many people say, but daddy, I made a mistake. Mommy, I made a mistake. And we'll say, you didn't listen. Or you just decided to do what you want. Mm -hmm. Your parents tell you not to have any sexual acts before you get married. You go out and commit the sexual act. Anyway, undermining your parents' advice. Because you're an adult now, you're 18 years old, you're an adult, you do what you want, right? You do whatever you need. You get caught physically by getting pregnant mm -hmm. or catching an STD. That's how you get caught, those three ways. Uh, there's more to it, but that's how you get caught. Disappointment falls on your parents about you. And you say to them, I made a mistake. That is not a mistake. It is a deliberate act because you chose to disregard the advice from your parents. Mm -hmm. Period. So if you got a, if you got a STD like HIV, something that's uncurable, herpes, something that's uncurable, and your parents had always told you, do not do this but before you get married. Mm -hmm. You do it anyway. Not understanding the true words of marriage. Sit down correctly and stop doing that to your sister. Stop being a distraction. Just sit still. You do that if you want, and you and and you reap what you you reap what you have done. Mm -hmm. Period. So if you dis, if you went ahead and did those acts and did not listen to your parents or did not do what your parents said, mm -hmm. you got to for the rest of your life you have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And that's just an example. In this situation, in this particular situation that I had just gave this example. A mistake would be a decision, uh, would be a decision was made soundly without any advice spoken about it from anybody. So basically, if nobody had told you not to have sex before you got married, if nobody told you the reason why, if nobody told you that, and you made a sound decision to do it, you use condoms, you use birth protection, you, uh, birth, uh, birth control pills, you use all kinds of stuff, uh, and you commit the act, then you found out that the decision led you in the wrong direction. When you realized the decision was the wrong choice, you could say you made a mistake because you really didn't know you were making a wrong decision. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between a mistake and a deliberate act. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You do not reap negatively off of genuine mistakes you learn from them. Mm -hmm. It is possible to reap positively off of genuine mistakes. Yes. It's possible, especially when you're learning from them and then you turn from it because it, it, it was a mistake. And you learned from it and you moved on. You never made that mistake again. That's reaping positively. Mm -hmm. But you don't, reap, you don't reap negatively. And I'm talking about emotionally negatively. 
you don't reap it when it's a genuine mistake. You reap off choices, negative or positive. It's the choices that you reap. When you make a choice, you made an understanding decision to move left or right. Amen? Amen. Amen. I will end today's sermon with this. Go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 4. Book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 4. Yeah. <laughs> book of Proverbs, chapter yeah. 15, verse 4. All right. Verse 4 says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but, but pers pers uh, perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Be careful how you speak and always be mindful about the consequences. Reactions are very important. Okay. If you care about others like you say you do, then you would pay attention to how you react. Mm -hmm. These projectiles, physical or verbal, can be the fork in the road that guides the direction of the receiver. I will say that again. Mm -hmm. These projectiles, physical or verbal, can be the fork in the road that guides the direction of the receiver. You could plant life or death in the spirit of who you are talking to. Amen? Amen. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. <laughs> Turn off the video, please. Who? Channel.